All right, let's talk about listing presentations. You may not be a listing agent. You may be on a team and you may be only working with buyers, but I promise you this material that we're gonna cover is um, will correlate with buyers presentations as well. We typically will meet a buyer for the first time. Not all of our buyers or sellers come from our sphere. There are times where we must compete for listings or compete for buyers. What I'm going to share with you, um, it comes directly from Bold, Old Bold, uh, Diana Kokoski. Uh, she was a rock star realtor. She closed. I think the stat is something like 96% of the listing appointments she went on, she would get. And she was like a million dollar producer. I'm going to literally um, share a video with y'all now. I'm not gonna do the whole video because it's about 30 minutes long, but we are just going to watch this and watch how a master goes about a listing presentation. Now, I wanna warn you, some of the stuff is gonna be a little dated, um, but take what you can. And again, if you're not a listing agent, you don't have listing on your plate, it still works for buyers too. So I'm gonna share my screen and get going here. Can you see my screen? Yep. Hi, I met Tony at the door and when he answered the door and we made eye contact, I took a step back. Subconsciously, this is telling Tony, hey, I'm not here to harm you in any way. And as I go through the door, shake his hand and say, hi, I'm Diana Kokoska with Keller Williams Realty. And we had an appointment at one o'clock and well, it's one o'clock. Now, the reason I do that is to remind him that I'm different than every other agent. How many agents do you know that are late for a listing appointment? How many have you been late for? Well, you know, I wanna tell you one thing. I have received listings based on the fact that I was the only realtor on time. In fact, I remember the house succinctly. It was 7177 Poppy Way. And I was on time, reminded the gentleman I was on time. And he goes, out of four realtors, you're the only one on time. You must watch the details. And that's what I want in a realtor. Well, you know, I don't care how you get the listing as long as you get the listing. So just remind them because it will make you different than all the other agents. Now, as I walked into the house, of course, I told him that I was excited and I asked if I could set the things on the kitchen table. Now I'm going to do the script with Tony that I would do as we're walking to the kitchen table. You know, Tony, I so appreciate you having me over today. I mean, this is a pretty important decision you're about to make to list your home with me. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's an important decision and I'm not sure I'm ready to list my home with you because oh. I've got other agents I'm going to be talking to. Oh, I see. Well, you know what? Then that'll be my job today to make certain that I make you feel comfortable and confident that I can sell your home. Won't that be great? That'll be great. Okay, perfect. You know, Tony, would you mind if I had a glass of water before we got started? Great. No problem. You know, Tony, I know a lot of agents actually ask you to take them through the home and show you, you know, you show them around. Yeah. Well, I want to do something different. In today's market, it's very important that we see your home through the eyes of a buyer. Okay. And so I'd like to look at it by myself, if that's okay, so I can look at it through the eyes of a buyer and make certain that we have it pristine so we know that it's going to sell instead of sit on the market day after day, okay? Okay, great. But are you sure you're going to be able to see everything? Because i got some really important things I want to show you. Absolutely. And after I list the home, I'm going to have you take me through and show me all those important things so we make certain that they're on the sheet for your brochure box. Now, let me ask you, you said that you were an engineer Correct. and you've been an engineer for how many years? Ten years. Ten years. Good for you. Uh, do you do things a little bit faster today than you did when you first started? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, that's I'm much better at it. Yeah, me too. And I've been doing this for many years. In fact, 27 years. And so when I go through this evening, I bet you're going to think that was really fast. It's the fact that I've done this so much and I've seen so many homes. Believe me, I will see it all and I will take great notes. Okay. Okay. I'm going to pause there because you don't have to have done 300 deals to use this script. 
Um, you'll notice a couple of things to start. So she said she showed up on time a little bit early and she made note of that, right? We always want to let people know what we're doing. We always want to let people know when we're doing things that other realtors don't do. This co totally comes back to even if you're working with buyers, right? Buyers, especially, they don't know what goes on behind the scenes. So I always keep my buyers updated with, hey, I just set that search for you. Did you get it? Hey, I'm looking online for you right now. I'm going to send you over some hot sheet stuff. Are you receiving that stuff? I'm letting them know that I'm doing work with them. Uh, same for listings. Like a lot of people don't know what's happening behind the scenes. So we're letting them know what we're doing to provide them insight into the value that, they're, that they have with us. Other, another thing that you'll notice that she did when she sat down was she asked for a glass of water. Um, in bold, they go over this theory of reciprocity. When he goes and does something for, for Diana in, in this circum situation, um, she is embedding that they're already working together. He's already done something for her. You'll also note that when she sat down, she said, I'm excited that you've decided to list with me. It was an, and it noted on the screen, embedded command. It's like subconsciously, she's already telling him, you're going to list your house with me. If you're working with a buyer and they're interviewing several agents, this has happened a couple of times to me, subliminally you say, hey, I'm, I'm so excited that we're going to work together. And he says, well, I'm not sure that we're going to work together, but you've already planted the seed. A lot of what she's talking about right here is psychological. These are tools that we all don't have access to unless we put a spotlight on it like she's doing. So um, just wanted to share some of those things and I'll continue to pause as we broach into this. And while I'm doing that, I have a seller survey here. If you would take your time to fill out the seller survey, that will help us this evening to make certain that I'll do a great job for you, okay? Perfect. Excellent, and then I'll be back in just a few moments. Okay, great. Okay, great. You'll note that she left the seller at the kitchen table to go do the walkthrough of the house. And her reasoning for that was because she wanted to see the home through the eyes of a buyer. You don't need the the 30 minute tour of the house. Um, like most sellers, they want to show off what they've done. But at the end of the day, does it really matter what they've done? Absolutely not. So what she did to satisfy him in that time that she was walking around is she had a little questionnaire. The questionnaire reads something like this. How important is it to have a realtor that is a good communicator? How do you best like to communicate? Little things that plant the seed that this person knows that when we work together, they're going to be well communicated and well taken care of. House, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, uh, very nice. And thank you for getting that all filled out for me. That'll be excellent. I noticed. This is another psychological piece. Diana is going to mirror and match the seller's postures and movements. So when he sits, literally, this sounds crazy, but it actually works. I promise you. When he sits, with his hands folded, you're gonna sit with your hands folded too at a, at a consultation, buyer or seller. When he takes a drink of water, you're gonna take a drink of water. When he holds his pen up, you're gonna hold your pen up. It, I don't know why, but she's done like studies of the brain and stuff and this stuff works. It draws you closer to that person and at the end of the, end of the day, they it obviously works to, to work together. Sure that Wow. So you have seen our signs in the area. Yes. Yeah, our sold signs, right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's what we want. That's perfect. Okay, and shows what we want here in an agent. Good for you. I'll just put that off to the side. You know, Tony, I have a great deal of respect for you and your time. And so I have three very important goals for our meeting today. Okay. Okay. Number one is your motivation and to review your motivation to sell this home and to price it so it will sell, okay? okay? And secondly, I want to take a moment and just allow you to answer, you know, ask me any questions or concerns that you might have, and I'll answer all of those. Will okay. that be okay? That's great. Yeah. Great. And then number three is we'll decide tonight if you want me to handle the sell for you or... Little things there. So she paused when she said, if you want me, me, 
to list your home. It's if you ever go through bold, has anybody here done bold before? Nicole, did they talk about embedded commands and stuff? I know when you probably went through it, it was all online and weird. Um, but they normally do a segment on embedded commands and it's all psychological. It's little pauses in your speech that will, will really go a long way. So when she says, do you pause, want me with an inf infection on me, pause to list your home. It drives the point home that you're going to list with me. If I want to work with you and either one will be fair. Well, what do you mean you don't want to work with me? Well, you know, sometimes sellers just don't want to price it correctly, and I know it won't sell. And I'm not one of those agents that just want to put a sign in your yard and allow buyers to come by. I really want to sell your home. And sometimes sellers want me to do marketing that I know don't, it just won't sell the house. Okay. And so I just want to be honest with you. Will that be okay? Yeah, I'd love you to be honest with me because I really want to get moved. Yeah. You know, in fact, if at any time you feel uncomfortable, it's probably because I'm telling you the truth. And you do want an agent that tells you the truth, right? Absolutely. Okay, excellent. <laughs> well, you know, Tony, as, as we go through this, I, I wrote down just three critical questions. May I ask those to you now? Absolutely. Excellent. So do you really have to sell your home? Yeah, I've got to be gone. Yes, okay. And are you willing to price your home to sell? Yes. I mean, you want it to sell. You don't want it sitting on the market month after month after month, right? No, I've got to be gone. So okay, I've good. Get done. So, yes, you're willing to do that. And do you want me to handle the sale for you? Um, well, you know, I, I don't want to make that decision right now. Like I said, I, I just. Throughout the course of her listing presentation, she offers multiple times to just cut to the chase and say, do you want me to list your home? Because at any point in this conversation, when he says, yes, I want you to, then the conversation basically comes to an end. You slide the exclusive right to sell over to that person and they sign and then boom, you're, you can leave. You can just talk about the details and, and, and get out of there instead of going through this whole rigorous presentation. So there's multiple early exit points for him to say, yes, list my home. Let's see what you have to say. Okay, great. And, you know, it's amazing to me. You mentioned to me over the phone that you were going to Chicago. Right. Now, I asked you a series of questions, and I just want to go through a couple of those with you right now, Tony, okay. to make certain that I do understand it. So feel free to add anything to this as okay. we go through it. Now, you said you needed to be there within three months. Yeah, no more than three months. No more than three months. Right. Okay. Now, do you want to be sold and closed in three months or just have it under contract in no, three months? I, I want to be out of here in three months. So I, I want it closed and sold or whatever you. So actually, it takes us about 30 days to close the transaction. So we literally have about two months to get your home sold. It said there that she slowed down her speech. Do we all know fast talkers? I'm probably, a, I sometimes fast talk, right? Um, but if the person you're talking to is somebody who's very calculated in what they say and seems a little slow. Psychologically, if we mirror them and match them, and this is on a listing presentation or a buyer, again, this pertains to either or, we should mirror and match them. If you take nothing away from this call, I bet you money that you will find more success in your appointments if you mirror and match people the way that they're talking. It's all psychological. Okay. Okay, terrific. And you've been working for IBM. Is that why you're taking the, the job? Of no, I've got a new, new, new job opportunity in Chicago. In Chicago, okay. Mm -hmm. And you said that's where you're going. Have right. to be there in three months. I right. know that. And what job are you taking? I'm going to be an engineer for another company. Another company. Are mm -hmm. you excited about that? Yeah, it's a great opportunity. She is doing two things here. She's establishing relationship and rapport, but she's also establishing the why behind the move, the motivation, so to speak. And you'll find throughout this presentation that she's using that motivation and she will come back to it time and time again to make him understand that if he wants this thing, that his motivating factors, then he's gonna have to, number one, list with her, but also do it her way. Yeah, um, more money and, and more, more opportunity for advancement. Yeah. So.
What's important to you about having this new job? Um, just a greater opportunity for growth with the company. Hmm, greater opportunity. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, what will that do for you? I mean, you're in Chicago, you're there in three months, you're into a new place and you've got this new job. What will that do for you? Well, um, one, I'll be making more money, more money. Okay. And then two, um, I'm going to be, I mean, in three or four years, I could be in a, in a management or, or, or an executive position. So it's got oh, lots of excellent. future for me. And I really want to take advantage of that future. Well, and you deserve that, don't you? Absolutely. Excellent. You know, let me just tell you that my goal is to make all of that happen for you. And if you're as committed as I am to that goal, then we'll get your home sold. Now, as we continue to talk about getting your home sold and discussing what it will take, it is only natural for you to see why so many people choose me as their realtor for life. In fact, during our conversation about the price of your home, mm -hmm. it will become evident to you that I actually get more people more money than the average agent in the Denver area. And you do want the most money possible, don't you? Well, absolutely. Well, good. <laughs> I my, thought so. That's everybody's goal, isn't it? Right. And because you want the most money possible, Tony, it will be easy for you to choose me and actually to sign the contract so you can move forward with your dream of getting that executive position and being in Chicago. Won't that be great? Yep. That's what Good. I'm looking to. Well, let's start by looking. Another example of a time where he can, you know, just say, yeah, let's, let's sign this. Let's go forward. But she keeps saying, choose me, me, me. Like this is an interview. We actually do have to talk about ourselves. And I know it's not always comfortable, but when you're interviewing against multiple agents, you got you got to differentiate yourself somehow. You got to talk about the me, not in a way that makes you sound, you know, uh, arrogant, but that you're expressing facts. All the statistics that I brought this evening. Okay. As you can tell, I've been in the Denver area for quite a while selling real estate. Hmm. In fact, this shows look at well, don't you wish you'd have bought a lot of homes back then, right? $20,000. <laughs> yeah, that was the average uh, sales price right here and how many homes have been on the market. But look at this, how many homes actually have sold, mm -hmm. how many were listed. You can mm -hmm. tell that there's a lot more listings on the market right now than what's selling, right? Well, a lot. Again, this is dated. We're gonna, we're gonna come to an end on this. I don't want to go through a whole listing presentation we are going to actually move over to command now. And we are going to talk about the things that should be in a listing presentation. A lot of the same stuff can be in a buyer consultation as well. So don't just think this is for listings. Um, have you all played around in command enough to know about designs? Erica, have you you been able to dabble a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Wonderful. Mary, are you you on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Have you played around with designs yet in command? Um, no, we are fortunate enough to have a full-time photographer and videographer, and she does all of ours. Okay, great. Well, I'm going to jump in and show y'all so that you at least know a little bit. On the front page of command, when you log on, you'll see all these applets. We're gonna to go to the designs one. And we are going to start a new one. This would be a print and go next. While I'm loading here, this isn't just for listing presentations. If you haven't played before with this, if you wanted to make personalized social media posts, so like Mary, for instance, I know you've got a photographer and all that, but if you wanted to do more above and beyond what's already being done, there are bajillions of really nice designs that you can steal shamelessly from in here. And I would encourage you to do so. We, for this practice, are going to go to listings and go to listing presentation. You'll notice uh, quite a few listing presentation templates come up. This is where you get to put your own spin on things. 
So when I pull up a list, let's say I'm, I really like this one. This one looks like me and you're all going to have a different one, right? You're all going to have different eyes and opinions, but we're going to go to use. Your design is available for print order. So let's just say you wanted to create 10 of these things and have them professionally printed. You can actually do that now. Uh, Command actually works with a third party printer and you can have these things professionally printed. Um, I don't know that I encourage you to do that. I think it's cheaper just to do it when you need one, but uh, I do encourage you to jump into here and play. So we will open this one up here. This is listing presentation template. Now, do you think that when you go to your listing presentation, it should say listing presentation template? Probably not. This is clearly just a design. So you can click on this and you can change the wording. So we could say listing presentation. Um, Amanda Taylor group, just an example. Okay, you can personalize this. If you don't like this picture, you can change that as well. If you have a logo or like uh, the Kemp group or the Tomlinson group, you can plug those things in here. It's very simple. In order to do that, you'll just follow along over here. T images, you'd import your images. Next thing, what, I'm going to ask a question and we can just start a list. What do you think should be in a listing presentation? There's no right or wrong answer here. Comps. Absolutely. Brian says comps. Why is that important? You want to show them that you've at least done some research on the area in their home uh, to give a rough idea of numbers, even if you haven't done a full CMA yet. It shows you've at least started the process. Yep, 100%. How many comps do you guys think it would be good to show up with? Three. I feel like three is a good number. There's some, there's some of these uh, um, um, listing presentations that show like 10 comps. Once you've covered two or three, people are going to just start getting like bogged down with it. So I would encourage you to kind of stick around that three to five range. Um, less is more sometimes. When we say comps, I know that that sounds, um, you know, like realtor speak. Do we all know what comps mean? Like what would qualify as a comp in your mind? Comparable property within a reasonable distance that has sold or is in contract or even for sale to give an idea of what the market is doing. That is sold within how long? How many months, years, et cetera? Six months. months. Six months, 12 months. Yeah, I would not go longer than a year back because if you think about it, if, if you don't know, you now will. Appraisers only are supposed to use information that's one year old. So it does us not much good. And it also doesn't give our, our potential client a real snapshot of what the, the, the new market is because a year ago, although Columbus was hot, it wasn't as hot as it is now. And we wanna give people a real idea for how, of how much their home could sell for. So good stuff. Uh, Brian also mentioned it needs to be relatively local. You can't go like five miles out if you're in a neighborhood, if you're in downtown Columbus and you go five miles out, you're in a suburb now. That doesn't make any sense. So make sure that you're hyper local because if you want to sound professional when you're talking to somebody, just tell them real estate is hyper local. It means that the street matters. You know, if you're thinking about it, if your home is on a street with power lines in the backyard, but one street over, there's no power lines, which home is more desirable? Most of the time, it's the one without the power lines. Hyper local, okay? Um, also, try to compare apples to apples, not apples to oranges. So it makes no sense for us to 
go to a listing presentation for a duplex with a bunch of comps for single families, right? It makes no sense for us to go into a listing presentation with homes that are a uh, thousand square feet. And this one happens to be 3000 square feet. Just be smart when you're pulling your comps. We talked about this on office hours. If you don't know how to pull comps or a CMA, please reach out to me or do what Amanda's doing and attend the Flex MLS classes through the board. There are two of those and they qualify as continuing education. They will teach you how to do everything we are talking about right now. However, if you don't wanna wait, holler at me, I'll happily teach you. Good stuff, so comps, that's definitely a thing. What else should be in a listing presentation? Information about the current market. Yeah, yeah, our job is to ed educate our clients and especially when we are working with new people who we have no idea if they know or don't know, odds are that education will make you sound like the local expert. And that's what we wanna really in infer through this conversation that we are the local expert. So just a one pager on the, the market of the day would be pretty critical. So if I were to ask you, or if you're, if you're to be asked, what's the market look like? What's the real estate market like? What would, what would you say right now? And I don't want Brian to answer because I know that you, you know this. Somebody other than Brian, answer that question. What's the real estate market like right now? The inventory is low right now for homes. A lot of people are, there's a lot of buyers, but not, a, not as many sellers. Great. That's a good tidbit. What other tidbits should we share? Think about it. We're in a listing presentation. Home, homes are selling for more than than they normally do because of the supply and demand issue. Yeah, yeah. How quickly homes are selling, not staying on the market longer than six, seven days or uh, less. The, uh, the market average right now is six days. And the reason I want you guys to, to start thinking about this is because every day you have this conversation, whether you even realize it or not. How many of your friends, when you go hung, hang out and have a drink, ask you, How's real estate? Every day you're actually having a listing presentation because whether they know that or not, they're interviewing you for when, you're, when it's time for them to sell their house. This is the, these are the tidbits that you should be, these little nuggets that you should be sharing with people so that you can subliminally convince them that right now is the time to sell, even if they had no inclination to do so. So if you told me, that homes are selling in six days, they're selling for way over asking price and the process is smooth and easy and I can help you. Man, it sounds like right now is prime for the, the plucking. You don't have to be in a, a formal listing presentation to, to share these, these type of nuggets, right? So good stuff, yeah. You definitely should have one page about the market. Josh, this is a dumb question, but where are you finding the average days on market? So I think it's in the e-notes. I just, I attend enough calls that I, I hear enough pros talking about this type of stats. Um, but in your email every month, you should get e-notes from the board of realtors, Columbus Realtors. And if you read through those, there's a, there's a ton of reports on there. And some of them are easier to read than others. But also, if you attend your broker's monthly meeting, they almost always share those numbers. There's always a portion on the numbers. And I would encourage you to attend those brokerage meetings because there's really good numbers. And if you just remember one or two of them, you're going to be golden. Okay, thank so you. One of those numbers, for instance, is, and another good nugget to share is, homes have appreciated this year between 14 and 15%. As a home seller, as an owner of a home, when I hear that number, I just see dollar bills flash in my eyes. And so then I say, man, maybe now is a good time to sell. 
That number makes you sound like a local expert. Um, Amanda says your marketing plan should be involved in your um, listing presentation. What do you mean, Amanda? Um, basically, what you what all you plan to do to sell the house, like walking them through what that looks like. I love it. He hit the nail on the head. So, so how can I look different than the other three realtors that are going to be interviewing too? Rhetorical question, I guess. But that's the whole purpose here, right? We've got to look different than everybody else. So first off, you, you show up on time. That's different. You have a nice presentation. That's different. You understand how to talk to the potential client and how to build rapport while also learning more about them and, and using that information about motivating factors to infer that they should list with you. So that's different. This presentation and your ability to convince them that your marketing is better than anybody else's is what can sometimes just clinch the deal. So I guess the challenge is, you know, what's different? about you. You're going to put it on the MLS just like everybody else. So do you notate that? You, you're going to put a sign in the yard just like everybody else. Do you notate that? No. I say yes, but you just don't make a huge deal out of it. Maybe like it, it's like, and, and during the process of, of presenting, I would say, here's what person A, B, and C is going to do. They're going to put a sign in your yard. They're going to put on the MLS. And what Diana, if we were to watch the whole 31 minute thing, she'll say they put a sign in the yard, they put on the MLS and they pray. It's the three P's of real estate. Here's what I'm going to do. So you, you'd actually list those things because they want to know that you're going to do those things. But here's what I'm going to do to go above and beyond to get this home sold. So think of the different tools that we have access to, things like, you know, Facebook, uh, Keller Mortgage, the leverage that comes with that, like being able to make, make sure that deals stay together because you're a Keller Williams agent. Um, you know, Facebook ads, social media, video walkthroughs, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do that makes you unique. KC probably has a list of five different things that he does that, or that he's going to do that nobody else does. He's going to walk through and get contractors lined up and do everything for you, basically. And he's establishing a niche. So think about, and this is again, rhetorical, what you would bring to the plate that's a little different. And if you don't know, then start thinking about that and start to start to change it up. Cool. Again, this should all be one page. So we got one page on days on market, one page on a marketing plan, one page, maybe two pages on comps. Don't overwhelm the person. Don't give them a 35 page packet. No one's gonna read through it. What else should be in a listing presentation? Probably something about you, <clears throat> as far as your experience, like why you're qualified to be their agent. Yeah, man, I'm glad you said that. And that should be one of the first pages. And the reason being, they're hiring you. They're not hiring Keller Williams. They're not hiring a company. They, or you, the, Although you are a company, you're your own business. They want to work with you and they want to know why you're different. So you'll see here, this, this page here is an opportunity for you to kind of give a little bio. That's not it. There's one in here somewhere. Anyways, what should be information that would be good for you to tell them about you? Your experience? What if you have none? Um. The experience you have in other jobs um, and how it relates to the one that the one that you're in now. Yeah, exactly. 
And you don't have to notate that it's not experience that you have in real estate. You can just say, I have experience in this, this, and this. And to your point, it definitely correlates. Very few people will actually ever ask you how long you've been in real estate. I've only been asked that once by somebody I was interviewing with. What else should be involved? We always take a or take the estimate because they refer to it every single time. So that it's a talking point that we can work through. Yeah, that might be a good talking point on the uh, like market page or comps page. Like here's what you might think your home's worth. What else should be on the about me page? Don't make it all business, make it a little bit personal so they can relate to you. I love that. So I have, I'm the father of three children. I enjoy X, Y, and Z. Um, other things, accomplishments. So you have a real estate degree. You can notate that. If you've got any previous uh, um, education degrees, anything like that, any awards that you've received in the past. Um, what else? And maybe even a value proposition. So we talk about um, what's your unique value proposition. We should probably have a whole class on that and how to write one of those up, but you are special and they should go with you because of X, Y, and Z. And you should list those things for them so that they can have a reminder after you leave. Because if they do actually interview three people, odds of them remembering everything about you is slim to none. So it's important to leave them with that reminder. But don't think because you haven't sold anything yet or you're brand new to real estate that you can't make it sound like you've got a robust amount of experience because you do. It just may not all be in real estate. Other things that should probably be involved. I like what this page is. This is kind of a snapshot of the home at a high level. You can take all this information from the auditors page. And I wanted to bring that up. Does everybody have experience with the auditors website? Mm -hmm. If you don't, every county has an auditors page. I want to bring this up real quick. In Franklin County, whether you're in Franklin or whether you're in some county in, in Jackson or Chillicothe, you've got this access and they all are a little bit different, but they're all, um, they all give you the same information. So when, on this Franklin County auditor site, I'm gonna go to the real estate property search. Um, I can type in either first name or last name. Can somebody give me an example? Um, let's see here. Erica, you had an example. Can we look up your address? Do you have the address handy? Uh, like my address or an address? Oh, that the one that you're referencing yesterday. Oh, I found out that it was, um, it's in it's in contract and it's actually with uh, Brian Kemp's group. Uh, Okay. So I looked it up. Yeah, it was we. It was funny. It said it contingent on financing and inspection. So, what's the address? Uh, bear with me here. I don't need to find the address. It was. Ah, bear with me, guys. Sorry. Open up my browser here. The reason the auditor site is important, guys, is because it will it will provide a lot of information for you without you having to ever step foot in the house. You can also find a lot of information if the home has been previously listed on the MLS within the last 30 years, that MLS data should still be on there. But I wanna show you guys this to just as a point of reference for the future for investigating homes. Our auditor website is way nicer than almost every other county, not just in Ohio, but around the country based on research I've done. They put a lot of money into it the last uh, last year. There's also an app that you can download for Franklin County that's really nice. 
I was going to say, I actually have a uh, two near recent experiences where the listing ac agent actually put the wrong zip code. So the contract that I submitted last night and that was accepted and approved this morning has the wrong zip code. And after looking at the auditor's website, which I should have done beforehand, um, obviously would have realized and had to redo most of all of my documents. Interesting. I did find the address if you want it, yeah, Josh. Right. It's 595 Hedgebrook Avenue. You don't even have to put the whole word in there. You can just kind of put a little portion of it. And there's been a lot of sales history. Good golly. Just One of those on. different units. They're condos, it looks like. Yep. Cool. Yep, condominium. But if you've never seen this, then I encourage you to play around on the, the website. Find your own home. If you haven't done this, try to price your own home. Try to price a neighbor's home. Try to price your mom's home. And what I mean by that is just pull comps, use the MLS, use this information to find out as much as you can about the home and go do some comps. <clears throat> All right, back to listing presentation. So this has a page on your property. So it shows that you've done your homework. You can pull a photo directly off the auditor's site. That's public information. I don't encourage you to pull it off the previous listing because that's not yours. Uh, there's a market snapshot here. This is just a quick hitter on uh, what's happening in your neighborhood. I really like that. Comparable properties. So as Brian was talking, this one has four of them. I love that. It's short, sweet, and gives a bullet point. So you pull the auditor's picture on the place, list what it's priced at, yada, yada. Oh, if you pull from the auditor's website, though, make sure you crop it to remove the date and everything from the bottom that shows up from the auditor's site. Good call. I like this one right here. This one lists the process of selling. You can do the same one for a buyer, list the process for buying. Our job is education. If we're in an interview versus three other people and the other two don't spend any time trying to educate, then you look pretty darn good. Here's this person's way of marketing. I'd encourage you to edit this. marketing plan. So there's all kinds of stuff here. Um, I'm not going to spend much more time on this. There are a lot of different designs. You can completely make it your own, but what I'd encourage you to do, especially if you have the ability to do listings in the future, is to start playing with this now, figure out what you like, and then pare it down. You don't need this many pages. There are, good God, there's probably 25 pages here. That's too much. Go in thin, lean and mean with maybe 10 pages max that tell the, that person why they should go with you. Anything else that we missed from the listing presentation conversation or any questions that you have about listing presentations? If I'm being 100% honest, most of the time when I go in for a listing presentation, I already know that I have it because most of the people that you work with to start are going to be people that already know you, already love you, and are already going to use you. So you don't have to put much stress in this. I would encourage you your first few to actually go in with something formal like this to practice on people that you're comfortable around so that when the time does come for you to meet with a FISBO, or an expired, or some Joe Schmo that you just marketed to, and they want to maybe consider you to list their house, that you feel confident and comfortable with this. <clears throat> but these templates are really nice, super easy to change, and um, can't say enough about them because they're free. Who here has been on a listing presentation before? Brian? Mm -hmm. What did we miss? Um, 
So I'll be really honest. I've not actually used one of these. I went on a listing appointment today with someone who messaged me on Facebook simply based on comments I'd made in a, in a group. Um, but it was kind of in a hurry thing and I didn't have time to make anything formal. If you don't have time, then at least go in having, having thought about these things, right? Like go in with a strategy of how you're gonna attack the situation. If I had nothing in my hands, I would just go in and number one, learn about them, ask a lot of questions because most people like to hear themselves talk. And then that would give me some basis of how to proceed. So once I learn their motivations and learn about them, I can keep referring back to those things as I talk about strategy, as I talk about education. And then lastly, I know that everybody at the end of the day wants to know the price of their home. Mm -hmm. I don't typically go in with a, here's what we would list your home at. Because you can't. How can you, and we've done this before, like CMAs, we've had classes on CMAs before. You can't know how much that home is worth if you've never stepped foot in that house. You can have a really good idea of a range and you can kind of go in with saying to yourself, okay, if it's moving ready and there's no updates needed, here's what I'd probably price it at. But how do you know if they don't have like some million dollar basement? Or conversely, how do you know if it's not ratty and tatty inside and needs a ton of work? It's going to be at opposite ends of the spectrum. So don't be afraid to go in there and say, hey, I'm going to take what I just learned. I wrote some notes down. I'll share them with you. And I'm going to go home and actually do some more research to give you a more precise pinpoint number on how, you, how much you would expect to make selling your home. One other piece I'd say is always get their um, payoff amount for their mortgage so that you can create a net to seller. And that's another thing that you're not going to be able to do before you show up. Yeah. So you don't have to have all the answers at the listing uh, appointment. Yeah, I find if you show up and you have too many answers or you're telling them too much, that, oh, it'll sell for this immediately and you've never seen it, they actually kind of take that in a negative way sometimes. Yeah, well, if I can get that much, why don't I just sell it myself? Well, not even that. They want to know that you're coming to see it and then doing your research, not coming in making assumptions about it. Good stuff. <clears throat> cool. Any other questions, comments, or concerns about listing presentations? Listings are way more fun than working with buyers. Why? Because it's way easier. <laughs> it's much less time, guys. And we've talked about this last month. Why listings? Because listings lead to buyers. When you own a listing, you should get one buyer from it. So it should be two pieces of business if you do it right. Well, also, if you just think about the hours involved, if you calculate how many hours you spend driving around showing and writing up multiple offers compared to really how many hours you actually spend on a listing you're kind of, you know, what you make per hour is substantially higher. Yeah. I just got an offer accepted yesterday, finally, on our 10th offer for a buyer. So it'd be much easier for me to be on the listing side and sell it in a day like we did last week. I spent a fraction of the time on that listing. Good stuff, guys. Well, before we go, I want to encourage you all to make sure you're attending next set, next Thursday, uh, your Market Center's events. They will be fun, I promise. And I want to encourage you all to ramp up your real estate contacts. So some of us aren't reporting. I want to encourage you to report. The Google form gets sent every Wednesday. And if you're hairy on what a real estate conversation is or a contact is, then let me know because... I'm quite positive some of you are getting more contacts than you're giving yourself credit for. Surely, some, I'm, I'm getting reported that some of us are getting zero contacts. That can't even be the case. You're literally shutting yourself in a black room for an entire week if, you, if you're not talking about real estate at all. So go do it. Thank you all. I appreciate you guys. And if you have questions throughout the week, holler at me. I'm available for you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks. Talk yeah. to you.